The new documentary, One Child Nation, is a chilling look at the one-child policy in China. Uh, the film uh, won the Grand Jury Prize at the Sundance Film Festival and was recently nominated for several Critics' Choice Awards. I'm Tony Ruiz of Gold Derby, here with the film's director, Nan Fu Wong. And, uh, you know, what do you think? We were talking before we started, and, and one of the things that you said was that you were surprised how little you knew about this policy. Um, so, so how did you decide that this was a subject that you wanted to, to tackle? I grew up under the one child policy. I was born in 1985, and the policy started in 1979. So there wasn't one day of my life that the one child policy didn't exist. And because it had been in place for so long and um, all the time, that almost became the background of everyone's life that we just didn't question, didn't even notice that it was there because it's like the air, you know, like the tree, the background. Um, until when I was pregnant with my first child uh, in the United States. And I noticed in the first week that after I discovered I was pregnant, uh, my whole priorities have shifted. Um, I became very protective. I wanted to protect the life in my, you know, in my body and uh, wanted to make sure that my child would be safe. And I was very surprised by that change. And I started talking to my mom, asking her um, what it was like for you when you were pregnant with me. And my mom um, started telling me stories because when she was pregnant, um, that was when the one child policy had already been in place for six, six years. And she had seen so many forced abortions, forced sterilizations and violence against women. And some of the stories that I had heard before when I was a child, but I never um, registered what, what that was until now I was an adult. I was a, a woman and um, a mother. So the stories that my mom told me again about the violence, it was completely shocking to me. Um, I just couldn't imagine how a woman could live a life like that every day is under fear, not knowing whether themselves are safe or their true child would be safe. So it was then that really made me wonder to find out more about the one child policy and what really happened that I didn't think or didn't question or didn't know when I was growing up in China. Yeah, and, and one of the things that's, that's very interesting to me is because, um, you know, people have this maybe conception, concept of what the one child policy was. Uh, what do you think is the, is the biggest misconception that people maybe in the United States, uh, have about that policy and how it was enforced? Um, I think a lot of people, um, surprisingly, especially when I was showing the film and talking to audiences from, um, you know, all over the country, and a lot of people have mentioned to me that, oh yeah, I've heard of the one child policy when it came out, it was in the news, but they all thought that people just voluntarily just wanted to have one child that is, uh, it's not forced, it's, um, everybody wanted to just have one child. And I think that was probably one of the big misconception of the, um, of the one child policy. And I think um, the other one um, is more common, which is a lot of people believe that the one child policy um, is the main um, reason why China has huge economic progress. But that's also not completely true because there are a lot of economists and sociologists that they have studied and um, concluded that China's econ economic progress is largely because of um, the market economy, the opening up in the 1979 and also the cheap labor and not the one child policy. It was it was so fascinating to me to see one of the things that that is the centerpiece of this film is is really the 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 multi tiered uh, enforcement of this policy and it really starts with the propaganda 
I think yeah. one of the messages of this film that's universal is the impact of of propaganda. Um, explain for people, um, you know, how does propaganda fit into this whole thing? Well, you know, in China, any policy when the government implements it um, is usually a combination of. Um, I mean, specifically, the one child policy is a combination of propaganda and violence. And um, when I grew up, it's basically from a kindergarten to college that you would study and you would learn the messages. The government would teach us that one child is the best for every couple, for the family, for the entire country, for the entire planet. Um, and there were. Um, numerous you know slogans about the benefit of the one child policy and i a lot of the times i hadn't even noticed it until i was making the film and um it surprised me how many people even though you know they suffered from the one child policy that they lost their their own child or you know people who have um like midwives or officials who had done a lot of uh, killings that when the, when, you know, forced abortions. And when I asked them, why did you do this? And, or do you hate the policy? A lot of them still supported the policy, even though it's against their own interest and benefits. And it was then I started asking why, why people all agree on with this policy. And, then I realized it was really a result of a long term, you know, indoctrination to make people believe that this is the only way that they are going to survive or the country was going to survive. And a lot of the messages even, I think, influenced me. Um, for example, part of the propaganda is about anyone who has more than one child is uneducated, is backwards, is selfish, is... Um, has violated the law. So my family, for example, is an exception because I do have a younger brother and growing up, I often felt embarrassed, ashamed, um, as if our family had done something wrong, something illegal, and it was almost like uh, feeling like criminal because of that. And so, yeah, so, um, okay. <laughs> no, but, but I, I actually want to continue on that thread because to me, one of the most uh, scenes of the film that, that create the most tension are these scenes where you're really interacting with your with your mom and there really does seem to be this kind of like, you know, she is almost of two minds about it. You know, there's this there's almost seems to be this internal struggle within herself mm -hmm. about her feelings about the policy. Mm -hmm. So. How did how did those conversations start, and have they continued since the making of the film? <laughs> um, well, the first time my mom openly said that she supported the policy was um, was when I was interviewing her, and I was very surprised. And of course, I tried to argue with her and try to convince her, but um, it, it, it was obvious that I couldn't. And and then when the film fin was finished, I showed my mom the finished film and asked her what she thought of it. And she said, everything that you showed in the film was true and what I witnessed in reality was much worse than what you showed in the film. Mm. And then she continued by saying that she still supported the policy even though that there was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, human rights violations. Because again, she used the narrative that um, this was the only way that China was going to survive. This is the only reason that we now have a good life. And the, the things that she said is almost, you know, it, exactly the same as um, the messages that we hear on TV, we read on textbook, we saw on the billboards. And I realized that the propaganda is really effective, that it's not going to, you know, a film is not going to change someone's mind overnight if they had lived 
um, their lives for you know the past decades in China, where they are not encouraged to think differently, to question, and so I wasn't able to convince my mom. And we still, I still continue. I mean, with the conversation with her, I do believe that somehow I've made her think.、Um, even though she's, she she wouldn't agree with me, but I think she now looked at things、um, with definitely with more questions. And even further than that. I- I remember watching this, and and the scenes where you go into these towns and villages,、uh, where and you you have these officials whose job it was at a local level to enforce this policy, and still you see this kind of like there's this caution、uh, mm-hmm. with some of the older women, like don't make us look like a fool, and 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 the the elders、uh, were those difficult scenes、uh, to make happen. How did you approach those? Um, surprisingly, the interviews were not were not actually difficult to get. I think the reason was because、um, in my village, those people watched me grow up. They all know my family. Everyone knows everyone is a very small place. So when I went to see them,、um, they were all friendly. They were all like welcoming because they know me.、Uh, they know my parents, my grandparents. Um, and then it, it got a lot of tricky as、um, as they realized that I was there asking questions about the one child policy.、Um, the interview, though, was、um, was the the village official, for example. He was very open because、um, I went and I asked him that I wanted to hear what he witnessed and what he experienced during the one child policy. I wasn't saying、um, I wanted. To criticize the one child policy, and I'm here because of that. I told him that I wanted to document this part of the history, and which is true, which is what I really wanted to do. And so he was、uh, he was very、um, open minded to talk about that. And the woman, his wife,、uh, was very afraid that this will cause him trouble. And he did say that in she did say that in the film.、Um, Um, the government, I mean, the film has been released in January. So far, they, the government hasn't contacted anyone in the film, and、uh, I imagine part of the reason was because all the people, including the official and the midwife and other people, like my mom, that they eventually all said that they supported the policy, and none of nothing. They said was subversive to the government or a secret that the government、um, didn't didn't let anyone know already.、Um, so I think that's why that's why they were open to talk about it. That's interesting. Do you, do you was there was there any part of you that wondered do they really think this or are they just trying to play the hand that they're dealt? Are they are they saying what they think? The government wants them to say.、Uh, I do think that they were、uh, saying what they actually feel,、um, because you know how, like sometimes you talk to someone and you know that they are, they they are thinking hard, they are conflicted, and that was the case with a lot of people.、Um, they all said that you know sometimes they felt guilty, they felt painful, they felt traumatized, and they even question. Whether they did was the right thing to do,、um, but then eventually they came back to the narrative. Well, but the the policy was necessary for the government, and even though I recognize that narrative was what the government wanted us to believe, but I don't think that those people and you know, especially my mom, which I know so so well. Um, those people were saying that because they felt it was the right thing to say. They absolutely believed in that. <laughs> yeah. So the film the film is currently streaming on Amazon Prime, and and、uh, the reaction to it has been really just、uh, exceptional with all the the awards and the and the and the nominations. What's that been like for you as a as a filmmaker, just to see this story, which is so personal. 
uh, be so well received uh, by critics and by audiences? Uh, I mean, it's definitely rewarding, I think, for any filmmaker to see the film being received and people responded to the film and um, got the messages that, as a filmmaker, that I wanted to convey. Um, but ultimately, I do hope that the film would get seen by as many Chinese people as possible because I am a Chinese citizen and um, I do see, you know, myself um, coming to the United States and started making films as my own political awakening and it allowed me to um, to see things that I wouldn't have seen um, in China. And then most of the people I know, my friends, my family, and my generation, they who live in China, they still um, live in a place where information is highly restricted. And I hope that films like mine would eventually um, reach them and help them see their own reality a little better. Um, and it's not happening yet because the film is banned in China. <laughs> and I do hope that with enough exposure um, here outside of China, eventually it would help push, um, you know, the censorship system in China to allow more people to see it. Well, we, we certainly hope so. The film is One Child Nation. It's streaming on Amazon right now. Uh, everybody go to goldderby.com, make all your predictions for the Oscars. And uh, Nanfu Wong, congratulations uh, on you. this terrific film. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good night. Take care.